All right. Hello, everybody. This is Colleen with Speaking of Spirits, and I'm here with Gina and Kate. And we are in your office today. We are. We're in my office. Kate does some Reiki in here with me and Kim Kirkpatrick. And then I do all kinds of other oh. hoodoo, doo doo. Hoodoo, voodoo. Hoodoo, voodoo. I'll kinds show. Of. Oops. A little bit okay, of the yeah. office. And there is a bed uh, for the massage. massage beds and, and Reiki. Reiki. Yeah. And then I do chakra balancing and I've got like all of my oils. I do guided meditations. Uh, oh my goodness. I can't ever think of my list of things. I'm a psychic. I'm a medium. I do like past life regressions, um, oh. shadow work. Girlfriend, I want to do that. Yeah, we should. Yes. So if you are not aware, give everybody how to contact you. All right. So you can reach me the same way a couple different ways. If that makes sense, it will more in just a second. So oh, I do my spiritual work under Celeste Sun, and that's for safety purposes because, unfortunately, we have untrustworthy and strange people in this world, so I don't necessarily want my personal information attached to that. Or you can go online, and it's Celeste Sun Psychic Medium Healer Guide on Facebook. And you can message me through that um, if you have questions or you know that you want to set up to get together. But I have to share a story about yesterday. We were doing a celebration of life for Michelle Gilson, who has been my friend for, I think, 13 plus years. And she was one of my biggest promoters. She told everybody, you need to call Gina for a cake. You need mm -hmm. to call Gina to do your wedding. You need to call Gina because, you know, you've lost a child. You've lost a spouse. You're wanting to try to connect with people. And one lady in particular came up to me yesterday, and I recognized her because we're friends on Facebook, and we've talked a few times. And she said, I, had, I knew you would be here today, and I had to come to meet you in person because I wanted to tell you when you connected me with my husband that it it changed my life it healed me it took me from wanting to leave this earth to be with him to back living a life and being whole and she's like you just it was miraculous what you were able to do and it was it was an interesting reading I don't always remember them because what I describe to people is I feel like I am a radio and I play whatever music is being sent to me so sometimes I don't remember what I've said because it's not really me oh. it's me channeling kind right. of but with her I did remember because um, and we're going to talk more about this um, in this session that's why I'm going into these details is I could smell I smelled cedar and I said it's like something that's been made from cedar I said I want to say that it's like a box but it's not a box well her husband had made them cedar nightstands and they oh. had the drawer in the cabinet in them and she's just like I can't this was yesterday this up well you... this was when I read for her 10 oh, okay. years ago okay okay um, Michelle she was one of Michelle's friends okay and she lives in Boise or she was living in Boise at the time um, she is there now what I don't know the time frames but mm -hmm. um, he had been wow. gone for about four months and that was the first thing that came through is this very strong smell. You know, like you get those little antique cedar boxes, mm -hmm. like the big jewelry yeah, or and they smell whatever. so good. That's what I literally smelled. And I've had that happen a lot where I smell something, whether it's smoke. Cedar is a big one. Um, I had another one that I did, and I'm like, do you have like a cedar deck? And they're like, no, it's redwood. And I said, I'm smelling cedar, and it's very strong. And she's like, we just put cedar chips down yesterday. She was in Florida. So it's it's one of those um, kind of astral projection kind of things too. But uh, she was, the lady from yesterday was just, she was crying and she said, I just, you don't know how much that helped me. And it's like, sometimes I hesitate to share a lot about that side of me because there's a lot of judgment out there. And there's a lot of, like I said, not so trustworthy people that you want them to know the other sides of things but it's people like her yesterday that just she came up and she hugged me like we'd been best friends our whole entire life and she's like I just I had to be here today because I knew I would be able to meet you so but um that's just bits and pieces of all the 
many things I was born with my gifts. And so it has been something I have done my entire life, whether it's psychic readings, I do tarot and oracle cards, I do healings, I do the Reiki, I do energy, chakra balancing, um, like the shadow work, different things like that, work with guided meditations for people that maybe have anxiety issues, uh, spiritual guidance and counseling. So I would love if any of you are interested in finding out more to give me a call, send me a text, get onto Facebook and message me, and I would love to help you out. And you do some Reiki healing here as mm -hmm. well, right? Yes. 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 She's been very kind to invite me and let me do some sessions here. So it's such a good space when you walk in. I always comment, I think, about how good the energy is in here. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just a great setup space, and you offer a lot of opportunities. So, yeah, very appreciative. Well, and it's really nice because... It's a very competitive world, mm -hmm. and not a lot of other people want to invite someone who does the same thing. Mm -hmm. But Kim invited me in, and I've invited Kate in, and we've talked to Susanna. She's working on mm -hmm. getting all of her certifications in Reiki, and I think it's easier to rise when you have the support yes. of all the others around you, not on the backs of the people you're trying to be better than. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm really glad you brought that up, and I'm sorry. We, we'll get to the podcast here in a second. But anyway, we, we also put on a class at ISU um, College of Technology, and it's on paranormal and investigations. And um, a couple of the students, and one just reached out to me, Kyle. Oh, awesome. Yes, He's a, been couple on of my days, mind. a couple of days ago, yeah. and he said, I just wanted to let you know um, we, we're starting our first investigation. And he said, you were so right that something like you're so right that um, trying to herd people is is worse than herding cats. <laughs> <laughs> and he is so and that's when you talk about people being competitive with each other. He he took the class and he wanted was really interested in setting up his own class, uh, his own team. And he was almost afraid to approach us and tell us that. And I thinking that's fantastic. And. I, asked, I told him, I sent, when I replied on the text, I said, I'm so happy for you, and if there's any gear that you need for the investigation that we might have, you're welcome to borrow it. I'm so not competitive that way. Yeah. I think it's great that, because someday we're going to want to not do this anymore. You know, we're not going to do it as often, or as what, often you know. and if we can yeah. throw cases to him and he throws some to us, and it's yeah. a big, huge world, and there's so, where there's no reason to be competitive lift each other up don't tear each other down yeah yeah so in um like with manifestation any energy work with reiki especially they really teach that there's enough for everybody like there's no reason we need to compete there's right. plenty of resources out there you're not stealing from no. anybody so yeah, yeah. just kind of what you guys are saying well lift and it was cool yep. team together. because kyle reached out to our team because of an unusual activity mm -hmm. in his home and he actually has come in and worked with me doing some practicing of shielding and protection yeah. and different things like that too so that's some of the other stuff i i clear houses um work with people to learn how to shield if you're empathic it can get really overwhelming right now and so learning how to block that out a little bit but still be able to feel it so you can see what's going on but you're not bombarded by the emotion well, and most of most of the cases we get are usually people who have gifts, but they're not aware of the gifts. So they may have tried to put a lid on it their whole life, and then all of a sudden it just breaks free and everything's going on, or and they have not wanted to either admit or they don't know that they have that they're an empath or a medium or whatever gift that they have. So. I think that most of our clients probably have a gift yeah. of some sort. And then well, and it kind of falls into what but earlier I was saying, I don't need the microphone. I am naturally loud. <laughs> and the other side is like that, too. You have things you might be able to shield most things. But then you get a loud mouth like me that's trying to come through. Or maybe there's something urgent they're trying to warn you. Right. Or they're like trying to get a message through to their family. And they come in like a marching band. And it really can overwhelm people that aren't used to filtering out the very powerful, I need you now kind of energy. Right. So, 
So in talking about that, this episode was going to center around ESP. Um, I hope that didn't go to sleep. <laughs> it's probably still recording. Just our end. Um, ESP and um, uh, gifts, yeah. like what people the have, gifts. The, the Claire gifts. So we were going to talk about those. And also, um, it's kind of interesting because when I was digging into this a little bit more from the side of the skeptic, right? So not that I'm a skeptic in this, but there's there's that skeptical side of of particularly the medical practice, where they want to tie everything to childhood trauma or some kind of abuse situation or something like that. And it's really frustrating to me that we still have, you would think in 2024, that we would have a, a medical community that's a little more receptive to some of this stuff. Some of them are, but it's a very small percentage. But I've been lucky to, especially with the holistic part, yeah, yeah. Um, a couple of the last few doctors, the one was like, write down what you're taking because I have thyroid problems and I want to feel better too. And it's like, but a lot of the others are like, that's mm -hmm. not, you know, pharmaceutically grade, blah, blah, blah. We have no proof. And it's like, well, uh, my proof is I take this herb or this supplement right. and I feel better. There's my, there's my scientific proof. Right. If, if this makes me feel better, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So why don't you guys talk about some of the clairs? You were reading up a, a little bit on this too. Yeah. Um, I think the ones that people know really well, Claire audience, where you, you can hear um, clairvoyance, where you can see. Um, and then let's see. There's taste. There's um, Claire. I can't Sentience remember. Sentience is. Is that is that the knowing? There's like clear knowing. And well, just describe them. I can't. Yeah, I, can't I can't remember, remember exactly. Exact yeah, we've actually we've done several um, presentations on the clairs. Yeah, we but have, and I wonder if I have. Yeah, just have it on my phone. What the physical things are the the yeah. tasting the what other? Yeah. So let's see. Taste, sight, basically all your senses. There's knowing. There's emotion, um, and there is. Um, the, the smell, audience, the smell mm -hmm. which is your hearing. Yeah, but all of them are very interesting, and I think I I would argue that everyone probably is strong in at least one area, and a lot of people are strong in a lot of areas. Um, I feel like for me personally, I have knowing like people will ask me questions, and I already have the answers in my head before they finish their questions, and I tend to be pretty spot on with that. I know you guys are gifted in that way too, yeah. but I think they're really interesting. Um, there's others too, other ESPs. We were just talking about, um, what is it pyro? Pyrokinesis? Kinesis, yeah. That would be one, being able to move objects, telekinesis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's honestly a lot out there if you're looking for it. And I'm sure the list could really go on. Have you seen a living person do telekinesis? I actually did when I was a child. I don't. I have, I don't know the exact name. I've heard it called sliders, but it's because I conduct energy, whether that's my energy okay. healing or my Reiki. I blow light bulbs oh. out. I turn televisions off. I, I've blown the screens. For me, it was street lights. Oh, Ever since yeah. I was a kid. You go when I get, they, if I'm really worked up on something, we'll be, I'll be driving down the road and you just see them go black, 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 black. As mm -hmm. I go by them. Yeah, and even my mom said, would you stop? Because yeah. I'd be all worked up over something, and I didn't know I was doing it. She goes, it is you. Yeah. My daughter, when yeah. she was probably 13 or 14, she has this horrible phobia of cliffs. And we were on a pretty narrow road going up in the hills looking at a property. And she was on the side with the cliff. And she got so upset that she stalled the car out. She, like, literally killed my battery. I couldn't get it to turn on, and then she was freaking out more. And I'm like, you need to stop. You did this. And she's like, I didn't do it. I said, yes, you did. Calm down. The second she calmed down and was breathing okay, car turned right on. So it's, it's interesting. But when I was a little kid, one of my mom's big things was, if you're mad, you don't slam your door. And I would go stomping into my room, eight years old. 10 years old and my door would slam and my mom would come in I told you not and I'm like I didn't touch the door and then there would be times like the book would come off the shelf or something and my mom would be like 
okay, well, m you know, maybe that <laughs> wasn't you. <know. laughs> had a minor earthquake right here at your yeah. bookcase. Yeah, it was because yeah. you slammed the door and it made that book, yeah. So, and it wasn't, I wasn't intentionally doing yeah. it. I've tried now. I think it's to. just that conduction of energy, yeah. you know, that. Because with the blowing light bulbs and stuff, it's usually if I'm in deep thought, it, do, it used to only be super emotion, like being really angry. That was me. Like you're mad and you'd hit yeah. the light switch and <laughs> the light would go out. But mine, I can be just like in really deep thought and I'll touch the light switch or I'll touch the stove and blow the fuse out and have to mm -hmm. go down and flip the fuse back. I So we'll talk about the case we have with pyrokinesis. Yes. So we had a home that had activity. Um, go to sleep? We went out really quick because part of that was affecting the children. Yes. And we are on top of that. It's like most of the things we can teach people how to live with it or how to feel more in control of saying, okay, you can be here with us, but don't bug us in the middle of the night and wake us up. Well, this particular house, they, they have very chaotic energy. Would you say that? The Boy, adults? that's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the humans that lived there were very chaotic, mm -hmm. to, to be generous with the description. And they would fight and be angry. I believe there may have been substance issues been. going on in the home. We don't know that for sure, but that often plays a part of it. And they lit the stove on fire. They weren't even the, in the room, were they? It was like the smoke alarm started going off and their stove was like on fire, <laughs> the, the stove top. And yeah, it was an electric stove. Yeah, not gas. And yeah. the first thing we noticed in driving in, because it was a longer driveway, and we come in to kind of to the back of the house, like mine, was all of the burned out uh, appliances. Yeah, that had been burned. Mm -hmm. Microwaves, electric s stove, um, uh, just was it a dishwasher or something? I think there so. Was, there, there was, was a, a few lot different things. Of different yeah. things back there, and they had all been burned. Yeah, like. That can happen because of a power surge, but usually not multiple times. And they said they'd had some, didn't they say they'd had someone in to check the electrical yeah. if it needed rewired or, yeah. and that was not the situation. But it was there. I don't think that they were doing it on purpose mm -hmm. at all, but I think their chaos and their anger and their just very volatile energy in that home and it does it affects I will be if I'm frustrated and I'm touching my phone I'm like I'm touching you and it won't even read my yeah. and it's like <sighs> yeah and then my it'll read the my thing. finger but yeah it's like hmm, don't don't acknowledge that <laughs> my mom couldn't wear a watch because mm. it would as soon as she put it on it would start like the old you know not a digital right right the, the wind up yeah or the, yeah and the the second hand would start and then it just gets faster and faster and faster and faster and just start running and she's multiple watches over her whole life couldn't, yeah. couldn't wear a watch so it happens yeah so yeah so the didn't they have something that went on in their fireplace too i'm trying to remember if it was them or yes else no that, it, would, would, that downstairs it, fireplace yeah, yeah there was something that i don't like remember the spark back up after it was oh, out. Maybe. I can't remember I can't. what it was something to do with the fireplace. Maybe I'd have to go back and look the notes. So and that so okay, so you deal with these cases and we give people pointers. Like especially something like this it can turn into yeah, not it. only pyrokinesis, but poltergeist activity. Mm -hmm. And you know, you get something this big happening. Um it's really important for the family to figure out how to look to to lower that stress and so we worked with this family several times and none of the advice was taken unfortunately yeah and finally you have to say we're we're kind of done working with you and I feel always terrible about doing that but you first you have something like this going on in your life you have to help yourself yeah and you have to make positive changes in your life so that you can make positive changes in your life. And it's really difficult when you get into these loops. Well, and we went above and beyond on that. I called in all of my drum circle friends. That was the third healer. time we were there. Yeah, all of my healer friends and Native Americans. And we had 
smudging and bells and sound bowls and drums and we went through that house chanting and praying and I mean we went above and beyond for this family and nope stuff's still going on well did you do this no well how about that are you doing that no did you stop doing no and it's like okay so if you keep pouring gas on yourself and lighting a match we can't not prevent you from catching on fire right you know, you need yeah. to stop your behaviors that are leading this or stoking it. Well, and, and medical doctors say the same things, right? You go to the doctor and they give you advice and, and you're not taking it, but you're going in there for the same complaint over and over again. Yeah. And it can be healed. There's only so much somebody can do. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you yeah, know. Reduce your sodium intake if you have cholesterol, heart, blood pressure, and people are like salt in their Doritos. You know, it's like... There's not enough medicine yeah. to switch that. So I was also looking at ESP from, like, ESP, the thought thing, mm -hmm. right? There's, like, I don't know, thousands of cases out there that have been written about, like, twins. Identical mm -hmm. twins having that. Mm -hmm. And even when they're separated. In different states. In different states, yeah. maybe adopted out, and they never kept track. I mean, they don't know where their twin lives. They just know they were a twin. And feeling like... A broken arm or that happened to the other twin and then they meet years later and start comparing notes and like oh my god yeah well even more basic right now there's a social media trend with twins where they put one twin on one side of the wall and then another on the other side and they ask them to do basic stuff and it's interesting just to see how much they match up like hold up a hand and they both hold up their right hand or like do a dance move and they both do the same dance move like it's just interesting to see anyways when they're close so I'm sure far apart there's a lot of stuff that happens too that they can feel yeah yeah I read about uh, I think they were brothers and they were separated at birth they didn't know they had a twin later at a university I think they didn't live that far apart they lived in the same state but in different towns and they went to college together and um, they learned that they both had a pet. They named it the same name. It was the same breed of dog. They both were in the same... That I think how they met was they both were majoring in the same thing at the university. And everybody was like, hey, Mark. And he's like, I'm Mike. Mm. And it, then they realized that was because they had a twin there. And like the first person that they dated, this kind of car or the color of car, it was crazy the similar and had never known each other yeah it's crazy I, I um and and it comes from even so the clairvoyant part or the precognitive mm -hmm. part that's all one all of this part of these gifts right that are out there and i found the story of um of clairvoyance and this was from 1958 uh Roger Fellum had a dream in September of 58 about, or Mrs. Roger Fellum, about her daughter, Vivian, who was then 20 months old. Mrs. Fellum wrote, I vividly dreamt of entering Vivian's room and much to my shock found her sitting on the sill of a bay window, one leg atop, the other dangling over the edge, and she was gaily babbling along, waving her little arms in total unconcern of any danger. When suddenly she started to lose her balance and was about to fall off the three-foot drop. Which isn't that big a drop, but for a baby it is. Okay. Yeah. About three weeks later, after Mrs. Fellum had been continuously checking on her daughter, she found Vivian in the position and place that she'd seen in her dream and was able to avoid possible accident. Uh, Steve, so um, this, this researcher who had talked to her um, cooperated the information with her husband because she had relayed this this dream uh, dream wasn't really a dream it was yeah, the, it's the clairvoyance right yeah. and and so he cooperated it so uh, it was pretty interesting um, there's so so many thousands tens of thousands of stories like this out oh there. yeah yeah um, this actually reminds me of one that I haven't even thought about for a long time but um, my family was looking to move into a new place and in front had a canal. And that night, my dad had a dream, and I was probably like four or five. I was really young at the time. My dad had a dream that I had drowned. And I came upstairs that morning and in kid language basically was like, I had a dream I was in water and I couldn't get out. 
And so my family was just like, okay, we'll not buy this house. Passing on yeah. that house. Well, yeah. So how many people does that happen to? And they just don't, like, I would have never thought that might have been a Claire gift. Like, right. Well, you just, like, opened up a memory for me that I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> so we were in Boise, and we had a son, and we were looking at houses, and it was out in the country, which is not the country over there anymore, but it was 30 years ago. Um, and it had a canal. And I said, we're not living by water. And my husband at the time was like, why not? It's beautiful. And, da, da, da. and I'm like, I just, I have a really bad feeling. I, we're, not, we're not living by a canal. And my daughter, who was born like three or four years later, at about age two, we'd moved to Pocatello. And she didn't speak very well. She spoke gibberish. The screen kicked over. Oh, okay. Um, she spoke gibberish. We called it Cerebic. Um, and it, we did because it was Arabic, English, and Babel. <laughs> and so, as clear as day, she gets up, she walks over to the window, and she goes, Mama. And I said, What? And she goes, Remember when I drown in the pool? What? <laughs> Met and Mama, and went and got back on her bed. To this day, she's scared of water. She's scared to go, she gets ang anxiety to go over a bridge, to go in deep water, or like water you can't see, like mm -hmm. river or lake. And I will bet you anything that she had drowned or had had something. But when you were talking about that, it was like I couldn't put my finger on it. But I was just like, I am not having a house next to water. Mm -hmm. So Well, I was, oh, I want to say I was around four. And my mom had precognitive gifts like crazy. And she... We, we were going to spend the day at a lake, and um, I didn't have a bathing suit. Um, so my mom knew on the way to the lake, we could have to stop at Kmart, get, us, get me a bathing suit, right? And so this was like the next day. Well, that night, my mom knew that I was going to drown, and I drowned in a, like a, um, it's like a little yellow bathing suit with brown polka dots. And uh, she said, okay, I'm going to keep an eye on her tomorrow. <laughs> and by then, my dad was aware of all of this, these gifts, because she saved his bacon in the airplanes many times. Mm -hmm. And um, on the way to the lake to meet the other family we were meeting for the picnic, uh, Kmart had the only bathing suit they had for my size was the, or an age was the yellow with brown polka dots. My mom's like, great. So, we're at the lake, and um, they're keep she's keeping a really strong eye on me, but there were quicksand holes on the shore of the lake. Oh, jeez. And so I'm waiting, and I'm in water just past my ankles, and I'm splashing around the water. And thankfully, um, the the older boys were playing on a log that was floating just just not too far away in the water and they're spinning the log and doing all the boy things that they do right and um i was walking and then whoop down i went and i was gone and my mom was looking for me and i was gone and the boys saw me go under and they were able to swim over and reach around until they grabbed my hair and pulled me out by then i was not breathing and so they did cpr and brought me back but my mom was like, that's it. If we haven't, if I have a, one more event like this with the kids, we're just not going. <laughs> it was like, it was it. That was it for that's her. It's insane. Yeah. yeah. So that, it's just people have these gifts. It's yeah. amazing, you know. Yeah, I often, well, I used to more dream of when people were going to pass. And it was weird because it wouldn't always be exact. Sometimes it would. It would be the same person or a part of what actually happened, but in a different, for example, my grandma, I had dreamt my grandma died and I was 17. And I dreamt I came home from school and the garage was filled with flowers. Like they have those stands that look like ladders oh, yeah, and they yeah. have all the potted plants and flowers on them. And I walk into my garage and there's, I don't know, a hundred different plants and bouquets. And there was a guy and he was fixing them. And I said, what are you doing? And he goes, your grandma died and I said oh and I walked over and opened their way in the house and that was it well my grandma died two days later and at her funeral the room 
you could smell when you walked in to mm. the funeral home, the flowers. There mm -hmm. were so many. But it, I didn't dream of a funeral home. It was in my garage. But I was at home when my aunt called me. My mom mm. and dad had left town. It was the first time they left town and let me stay at home. And I was at home and had, um, just before I went to school on Tuesday morning, they called to say that she had passed. I'm sure that most of most of the people who are, who listen to these kind of podcasts have had their own experiences, and you know, like, you know, who's on the phone, or you think of your friend, and the boom, they're on the phone, or just those. Mm -hmm. th there's no. Um, what do we What do we say? There's no. Um, Coincidence. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I come up with the word. No coincidences out there. It's just the way that the universe works. We're all yeah. connected and. Um, it's it's an amazing thing so well and a lot of people get frustrated and I used to get really frustrated because there's not always rhyme and reason and cohesion and you know everything's exactly the same but what I have learned and what I have been told many times is the more you acknowledge that and follow it whether it is avoid going to the lake that day or it is gosh Kate's on my mind I need to call her and you actually do it the stronger those get. It's like working mm -hmm. a muscle. The more you, you know, bench press or whatever, the stronger those muscles get, the easier it is to bench press. The more you bench press, the stronger mm -hmm. it gets. And that's with this intuition or any of the premonition type things, the more you acknowledge it and the more you act on it, then the next time, it's not that it's perfectly clear, but sometimes it's more clear mm -hmm. or you get a little more notice kind of a thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for hanging with us today. We hope you enjoyed this topic, and uh, stay tuned for more content from Speaking of Spirits. You've been listening to Speaking of Spirits, powered by Pocatello Paranormal Research in Pocatello, Idaho. Thank you for joining us today. We're glad you could be here. If you're enjoying the podcast, please do us a favor and go to whatever platform you are listening to the podcast on and give us a review. We prefer the five-star reviews. This helps us know how we're doing, and it helps others to find the podcast. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to see you on our next podcast.